Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Hello, friends. Thank you for joining me today on Deeper, your daily Bible study. Our topic today is titled The Prophetic Pattern. This is part two. Several days ago, we looked at the Bible's prophetic pattern. We're going to continue a little bit more with that today and specifically be looking at the false prophet in the book of Revelation. But before we do that, I'd like to share a brief testimony about what the Lord has been doing in my life, in my family's life, and also for Pathway to Paradise Ministries. Sharing testimonies is a very important aspect of our Christian experience. It's also um, a wonderful way that we can share with others what the Lord is doing in our lives. And so I'd like to just start with that briefly. We will get to our Bible study. About a year ago, my wife and I were both impressed that we needed to put our house up for sale and uh, see if the Lord wanted us to um, move and find a place to really establish Pathway to Paradise Ministries. We agreed with our listing agent to put our house up for sale for six months, and we were praying through this entire period, Lord, if you want us to move, even though we don't know where that would be, uh, please sell our house within this six-month period of time. Well, to make a long story short, even though we had several viewings, the only offer we received was on the very last day of that six-month listing period, and it was for the exact amount that I'd been praying about uh, as the minimum that we would be able to accept. So that was pretty clear to uh, both my wife Stacy and I that the Lord had something in store for us. We sold our house in late October last year. We had no idea where we uh, would be moving or what the Lord's plan was for us, but we continued praying, we continued looking at lots of properties uh, in many different places of the United States. And in February of this year, the Lord led us to um, actually a place just a couple of hours away from where we had been living. We are now uh, close to Max Creek, Missouri. If you look on the map of Missouri, Max Creek is close to Lake of the Ozarks in central Missouri. And uh, one week after we had settled into our house, we had closed, we were moving in, uh, we were driving about 15 minutes away from our house and uh, we saw a for sale sign in front of the local Seventh-day Adventist church. Sadly, that church had closed uh, several months before due to dwindling membership. And um, my wife and I looked at each other and we said to each other, well, maybe this is why the Lord has brought us here. Um, miraculously, the Lord provided uh, some very generous, a very ge generous donation that allowed Pathway to Paradise Ministries to purchase that uh, church building, and we now have a new headquarters. And if you go to our website at pathwaytoparadise.org, you can see uh, a lot more about what is happening with this new headquarters. But we are uh, very excited about what the Lord is doing here. We're going to be able to use this uh, for office spaces, for recording studios. Um, of course, there's a sanctuary in the church, and we look forward to holding some live meetings there. Um, evangelistic series for our local community. We'll also be uh, taping those, putting them uh, into video form, and of course distributing those as far as we can with the Lord's help. And um, we just really see the Lord's hand and how this has all come together. Um, I wanted to let you know about this today because next week, starting on June 17, uh, for two weeks, June 17 to June 30, we're having a volunteer work bee uh, at the church. There's a number of renovations that needs to take place. There's um, a lot of water damage in the basement and, and uh, other things that just need to be done to make it work for a, a ministry building like ours. So if you live within driving distance of Max Creek, Missouri, I'd invite you to uh, please hop to our website, again, www.pathwaytoparadise.org. Uh, you can find out more about what's happening here, and uh, we would love to have you join us. If it's just for one day, that would be wonderful. If you can come for more than one day, even better. Uh, we do have uh, some RV sites available with full hookups and a uh, very limited amount of other housing that might be available. Anyways, you can uh, contact us through our website, uh, through Facebook, 
or you can call our toll-free number at 855-447-8788. There is one other aspect to what we're doing, and that, of course, is that it takes money. We estimate that it will uh, cost about $400,000 to uh, complete all of the repairs and new construction that is needed. Um, and I just want to say another word of praise to God because this has all happened in the last two months. We received the donation to purchase the building. And uh, in the last several weeks, we have received a $100,000 uh, lead gift toward that $400,000 remodeling uh, expense. And we have also received a pledge for up to $150,000 in matching funds, which means that we only need to raise the final $150,000 out of $400,000. Still a lot of money, but uh, the speed with which uh, the Lord has been providing this uh, is just a confirmation for us that this truly is the Lord's leading. So uh, if you feel led to uh, participate in that, you can double your money right now uh, through the generosity of, of that donor uh, providing the matching gift. Uh, again, you can find out more on our website at pathwaytoparadise.org. Let's move forward now into our Bible study. And we should begin with a word of prayer, so let's do that right now. Father in heaven, we thank you for all the ways you work in our lives. Sometimes we recognize this, sometimes it's you know, visible, obvious things. Many times it's maybe less obvious, or at least we don't notice it. Uh, whatever our situation might be right now, Lord, we do thank you for your compa uh, compassion and your, your guidance on us. We ask for this now as we open your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Several days ago, we were looking at the Bible's prophetic pattern, and I will just summarize very briefly if you want to look more in depth. Uh, Look back in our archives there on um, YouTube if you're watching, or you can, uh, of course, find the podcast wherever you're listening to that podcast. But here's the idea. All the major time prophecies in the Bible, at the end of that prophetic time period, God raises up a prophetic figure who kind of acts as a confirming prophet. And that prophet does several things. That prophet announces the end of the prophetic time period. Um, the prophet... Uh, leads people into an experience that God wants them to have. Uh, think of Noah at the end of 120 years. God used Noah to call people into the ark. Think of Moses at the end of the 400 years of bondage that God had predicted to Abraham. God calls Moses to lead the people out of Egypt. There's also a time of judgment that takes place as well at the end of most of these um, prophetic time periods. Again, think of the flood. Definitely a judgment that came upon the world. Uh, think of the ten plagues that fell on Egypt. These are judgments that fell right at the end of that 400-year time period. I want to look at maybe the major time prophecy in the Bible, certainly the one that's repeated the most times in the Bible, and that is the 1,260 years that the little uh, horn of Daniel 7 or the beast of Revelation 13, same thing, um, that 1,260 years that this power uh, reigns. Now, we understand from prophecy, and we've been through this in other episodes, uh, that that time period points to the established Christian church, the Roman church of the Middle Ages, begins in the year 538 A.D. and ends in the year 1798 A.D. when Napoleon's army took the Pope captive. So, what prophetic figure arose at the end of this time period? Well, it's interesting. In Revelation chapter 16, we find reference to a false prophet. Now, I understand that there are a lot of people who are looking forward in time to a, maybe an individual who will arise uh, at the, during the tribulation, perhaps, or right at the very end of time that will be the false prophet. But uh, we... Uh, have discussed before the historicist uh, method of prophetic interpretation, which is what uh, Christians through most of history and Protestants through almost all of Protestant history have understood to be the Bible's most accurate way of understanding these, these prophecies. And so from a historicist perspective, we can't look just in the future at one individual. Uh, very likely there is um, something in history that already fulfills this prophecy. Now, 
the false prophet goes by two names. And um, the other name that it goes by in the book of Revelation is the beast from the earth in the second half of Revelation chapter 13. There are a number of biblical parallels between the two that make it very clear these are pointing to the same entity. They both work with the beast to implement the mark of the beast. They both use miracles to deceive the world. They both lead people to worship the image of the beast. Both the false prophet and the beast from the earth are directed by the spirit of Satan, according to the Bible. And both fight against God and his people at the very end of time. Now, think of some of the other false prophets in the Bible. And I'm thinking now of historical figures such as Balaam. He was at one point a true prophet of God, but having turned his back on God, he became a false prophet. And so keeping this in mind, we can identify this this figure in history, uh, this power in history. Uh, The false prophet in Revelation then being the same thing as the beast from the earth. Um, The beast from the earth we understand to be pointing specifically to the United States. In Revelation chapter 13, this beast from the earth arises right at the end of the 1,260 years. And that, of course, is exactly in history when the United States was rising into power in the late 1700s. And um, there's another interesting aspect of this power. It has two horns like a lamb, but he speaks as a dragon. Now, in Revelation, a lamb symbolizes Christianity. It symbolizes Christ. Uh, This is the only time in the book of Revelation that lamb does not refer specifically to Christ. So here's what we read from Signs of the Times, November 1, 1899, regarding this power. This power, the last that is to wage war against the church and the law of God, was symbolized by a beast with lamb-like horns. The beasts preceding it had risen from the sea, but this came up out of the earth, representing the peaceful rise of the nation which it symbolized. The two horns like a lamb well represent the character of the United States government, as expressed in its two fundamental principles, republicanism and protestantism. And republicanism here means representative form of government. So, civil uh, liberty and religious liberty. These principles are the secret of our power and prosperity as a nation. Those who first found an asylum on the shores of America rejoiced that they had reached a country free from the arrogant claims of popery, popery and the tyranny of kingly rule. They determined to establish a government upon the broad foundation of civil and religious liberty. And that's from Signs of the Times, November 1, 1899. Now, I understand we're moving very quickly through this today. Um, You uh, can find out a lot more about this by looking at our series, Is the Reformation Finished? That's available for free online. You can watch the videos. You can also order the book uh, from our website, Is the Reformation Finished? According to the Bible, this lamb-like beast that uh, appears as a Christian power ends up speaking as a dragon. In that sense, it would be a false prophet. Um, Tragic end to this uh, nation that God has so richly blessed and used uh, for so long in history here. Last quote, Last Day Events, page 131, speaking of this change that will take place. When Protestantism shall shall stretch her hand across the gulf to grasp the hand of the Roman power, when she shall reach over the abyss to clasp hands with spiritualism, when, under the influence of this threefold union, our country shall repudiate every principle of its constitution as a Protestant and Republican government, and shall make provision for the propagation of papal falsehoods and delusions, then we may know that the time has come for the marvelous working of Satan and that the end is near. So friends, that is a very fast overview of the false prophet and the beast from the sea arising at the end of the 1,260 years in the book of Revelation. Hope you've been blessed by the time spent in God's Word and please join me again tomorrow.